Okay, hi, I'm Pete Rogers, MD. I'm gonna talk today about weightlifting after 50. This is for guys after 50 years of age. You know, a 20 year old guy's a little something different. He's got all the time in the world on his hands. He don't got any job. He's being supported by his parents. Okay, he goes, today I'm going to do chest. Tomorrow I'm gonna to do back. The next day I'm gonna do my calf. Now, old guy don't got time for that. I only lift one time a week. I actually only do one set. But for an old guy, I'm 57 now, that keeps me reasonably healthy. All right, my last workout I did 100 repetitions with 100 pounds for squats, all right? And just did one set, and I'll tell you why I just do one set. Um, we're gonna go a little bit through the physiology of exercise. First thing to be aware of is something called neurogenesis. When you exercise, you increase something called brain-derived neurotropic growth factor. Neurogenesis means to make new neurons. So exercise is great, typically in animals, exercising and using your brain, they go together. When you're moving around in the forest or the jungle, you're simultaneously using your brain and your body. And that's good because a lot of the things that are happening in your muscles also happen in your brain. Just as your, your muscles will store more glycogen, your brain also stores more glycogen when you're exercising. It's called glycogen supercompensation. In addition, when areas of your body are being more active and they need more blood supply, they'll make more small blood vessels. That's called angiogenesis. So if your muscle is getting bigger, your body will make blood vessels to support that muscle, and it'll also make blood vessels to support the increased brain tissue that might go along with that. Um, so uh, one thing here is we'll talk about high intensity interval training. A guy who's pretty famous for doing research on high intensity interval training is a guy named Jabal. He's from Canada. He's got a whole book on this and videos. If you're curious, you can check him out. But the bottom line is increased intensity of training provides faster results. So what I like to do is a short, intense workout, and that leaves me reasonable fit uh, for the rest of the week, and I don't have to put too much time into it. Okay, um, the next thing is, why do I like uh, high repetition sets? Because glycogen in your muscles, depending on what you read, each gram of glycogen is stored with a couple grams of water. I've read different numbers on how much glycogen it is, but the point is this. When you do high rep sets, you're going to have to store more glycogen to have more uh, energy in that muscle and that glycogen storage is going to come with it some water storage, which is going to make the muscle bigger. So the point being is you'll have bigger muscles if that's what you want. Uh, glycogen is a fast acting storage form and the liver, for example, can only store about one day's worth of glycogen. Uh, you can't store glycogen for all your energy needs because it would be too big. Fat is, can store it dry. That's why we store tons more energy in fat than we do as glycogen. Okay, um, this book, by the way, is a nice book. It's called Power, a Scientific Approach for Weightlifting. It's by Frederick Hatfield. This Frederick Hatfield is kind of an awesome guy. His nickname is Dr. Squat. He's like a PhD in exercise. He um, was like one of the first guys to squat 1,000 pounds. He wasn't too big. I think he was weighed about 240 and he squatted 1,000 pounds. Um, and his key thing was going really fast. He, divided this whole, he developed this whole system of training with the emphasis on going fast because that made him get stronger a lot faster. And there's a picture of Tom Platts on the cover and he also is a big fan of doing high rep squats. And what I like about high rep squats are you can come down and control the weight. I use a free weight of course. I like the safety squat bar. That's the one where you got your hands up and tight. If you got shoulder problems, you're an old guy, back problems, a safety squat bar is just a lot easier than a regular bar where you got your, get your arms way back. Often guys with shoulder problems, it's hard to squat with a regular bar. I also recommend squatting within a safety rack. You don't have to, but it's kind of nice to have one, especially when you're starting out. Make sure you get trained by somebody who knows what they're doing. Um, the other nice thing about doing high rep sets is that if you're doing a set of five or 10 and you're not intensely with it at that very moment, you might miss the rep and get injured, okay? Versus if you're doing a set of you know, 20, 30, 40, 50 or higher, that's a weight that if you need to, you can sort of muscle up the weight and control it. You have much lower risk of injury, much higher risk of injury, the lesser the number of reps you're doing. Young guy might want to have more fast twitch fibers if you're competing in powerlifting, for example. I don't care about that because the fewer reps you're doing, the higher your risk of being injured. Okay, um, so we talked about Tom Platts. Tom Platts would do sets of 20, 30, 50 squats. Same with this guy named Efferding. He's pretty impressive, like the world's strongest power lifter, world's strongest bodybuilder at one time. But the only thing I would tell you is you can learn a ton of stuff from these guys on weightlifting, but I wouldn't necessarily take their advice on diet because a lot of these guys, you know, the average professional bodybuilder I read in one article dies at 47 years of age, okay? A lot of them are not that healthy. And I think it's especially all these protein supplements and some of these other supplements I think are predisposing them to kidney failure. So be careful about that. I recommend 
you know, watching your diet. We'll talk, I got a whole bunch of other lectures on nutrition and protein and all that. All right, high rep squats. Why do I like doing a high rep squat? Because with a squat, you basically exercise almost every muscle in your body and I'll just do one intense set and then I feel strong the whole, the whole week. So I don't have to lift weights every day. My goal is only just to maintain simultaneous aerobic fitness and muscle tone fitness and that's enough. Um, don't get me wrong, I, I wish I had all the time in the world like a Bulgarian lifter and had nothing else to do all day. But for an old guy who just wants to maintain some physical strength, I'm 57, I don't got any medical problems. Um, one set of high repetition squats a week and you'll be pretty strong and pretty healthy, reasonable amount. Um, safety squat bar makes it a lot easier. Go as fast as you can like Dr. Hatfield recommends and you'll be a lot stronger and you're simultaneously doing high intensity interval training so it's an aerobic and a resistance training if you will, muscle training at the same time. Um, and so that's basically it. What do I recommend for guys after 50? Squatting also keeps your flexibility, your mobility and you know you got good balance if you can squat with free weights. So all of those things will keep you healthy, strong, prevent osteoporosis and prevent you from falling down and you can go into old age being fit instead of being you know fat, sick and weak like a lot of old people let themselves become. Alright so anyways that's our summary for weightlifting after 50.